Hey, this is John Campbell from Lamb of God, and you're watching CMS TV. And right back here on Chris Aiken Presents, myself, Mr. Eric Ferentinos, and joining us now from Vixen, Miss Britt Lightning. Britt, how are you? Hello, everybody. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, we're so stoked you're here, Britt. Good to see you. Great to see you. <laughs> well, we're going to be playing in a couple days together. I know. Two days from now. I can't wait. I love <laughs> when we play together. It's so fun. It is. And and you you were playing this weekend, too. You had Rocktober, uh, September Fest. Yeah, Rock Timber. I know. I kept Rock calling it over to Rock Timber. Yeah, we did that. Was that yesterday? I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Saturday. And then, um, yes, and then we we did a good one on Friday too. Oh, the Arcata. I love the Arcata Theater in uh, yeah in Chicago. Awesome. So you're you're probably pretty tuckered out yourself. I, I haven't had too many hours of sleep. We we had to come from uh, Puerto Rico and go to JFK, and I probably got back eight hours ago or something myself. I know. I saw that. <laughs> we're so stoked that, that you uh that you did make it today well i'm happy to be here well, awesome. well Britt, we were talking earlier uh me as the non-musician i have no idea but we were talking earlier about worst airports there are eric is claiming jfk w would you care to, to okay offer I, it on I, this? I, yeah i hate lax i think lax is the <laughs> worst um and it has a lot to do with the pickup drop-off terminal area because if you want to get an uber you have to walk all the way you have to walk like two miles to the uber uh pickup station or if not you have to get on an extra shuttle that takes you around all the terminals and eventually drops you off at the uber thing and i'm always getting off the plane with like guitars and and overweight suitcases and like i'm just so loaded down a backpack that weighs more than me like and so the thought of like getting on an extra shuttle or or doing you know or walking i end up walking i end up walking as soon as i get off the plane because I want to stretch my legs anyways but by the time i get to the uber pickup station i'm like sweating i have like no layers on anymore because you know you're on the plane and you have all the extra sweatshirts and it's just like it's a mess i hate it i hate it hate it <laughs> i had both both airports yesterday so it was jfk to lax because you know i live in san diego but sometimes the the plane ticket is like half the price if i go out of lax with the other guys so i once in a while will agree to do that and this was one of those uh trips so of course we had to go you know puerto rico jfk into lax and the um flight from jfk was delayed but we were lucky enough to to make our flight i don't know if you heard the beginning of the show but all the vegas people are stuck in new york right now steven piercy his lady uh jason green johnny monaco uh they are all stuck in new york all the vegas flights were canceled for like two days um <laughs> now i don't know how this is possible but their luggage somehow did go to las vegas so they don't have their luggage oh and God. Their credit cards were all compromised in Puerto Rico. So they must be just oh, flipping no. out. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll find out probably soon what's going on with them. But I make it to LAX. Now, I already, I had, I had uh, went to Wally Park Express uh -huh. to park, which is the cheaper Wally Park. And I kind of realized why. It's because the Wally Park Premier probably has about five shuttle vans to pick up. And I only think there's one buckety Wally Park Express fan. And it probably comes by once an hour or some shit. <laughs> uh, so after getting in late last night, it was already like 1130 at night. I, I was standing outside for like an hour and it's it's nighttime you're tired all the lights coming forward you can't tell which shuttles are coming at you or not you're just like oh, is this it no oh, i was so mad like it took about an hour um and then of course i only paid for the parking for the certain time so now it's been two hours so you got to pull out your credit card to pay a little more money uh finally got out of there yeah i got home probably like one o'clock in the morning or something like that it was terrible <laughs> yeah not as and bad as those guys. so many flight delays and stuff too so we we were in chicago and then we had to fly the next day to play uh we were playing the next day so it wasn't a travel day in minnesota and um we found out at like 2 a.m that the flight was delayed and we would have arrived after our set 
So, you know, that's like a whole other scramble when you realize that. And then you're like, oh my God, got to switch airlines. We're not, we're going to miss the show. <laughs> oh, were you guys actually were able to like uh, somehow buy tickets on another airline yeah. to make it to this gig? Wow. Yeah, but it was like a scramble that we realized at like 2 a.m. And everybody, it's like, okay, everybody up. Let's figure this out. <laughs> so are you always like, uh, you know, prepared for anything at this point? I mean, um, you, you have everything you need, to, you know, guitar wise, you're, you're, you're all set up and ready to go before you even head out on this thing, just in the event that there's not going to be time to do any tweaks on things and what, what have you. Definitely. Always prepared. And I'm always assuming things are not going to go right. So when they do go right, I'm just pleasantly surprised and in a great mood. So if you just like have no expectations, then that, I found that's best. <laughs> and you have an awesome guitar. We have to like take a minute to talk about this Jackson um, Randy Rhodes V. Is that? Yes. Yes. The Randy Tell Rhodes. us all about this guitar, like how you came to possess it. What went into getting this thing? Yeah, so when I started playing guitar, um, I was like super into it and I would practice, practice nonstop and never warm up. And eventually I, I had a problem with um, uh, carpal tunnel. And okay. so um, a friend of mine was playing the Randy Rhodes Flying V. And I, I realized I could play that easier because one leg is longer than the other. So the way that it's weighted, the neck, instead of being just like making right. your wrist fall like that, oh, where's mm -hmm. the camera? This is flipped. <laughs> um, it's more like that. And so, you, you know, there's less bend in the wrist. And so I got hooked on the Randy Rhodes V's and it was so comfortable. And um, so the first Randy Rhodes I got was a tiger stripe one that was in that Bakken video that you guys just played. And um, and that was my very first guitar. And I was really into horseback riding um, before I really got obsessed with guitar. And I was mm -hmm. I had a horse and um, I realized when I started doing gigs, the gigs were like late night, Saturday night, I'd be out till 4 a.m. And then the horse shows, I'd have to be there at like 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. And I was like, this is not working. I can't do both, this is killing me. So I ended up selling my horse and buying that uh, Tiger Stripe uh, Jackson V. So that was the first Jackson V I got. And then I was hooked. Then I got to know the guys at Jackson and then they helped make me that Crack Mirror V, which um, I got in 2009. And um, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's got a, a coating over it so you can't cut yourself on the Crack Mirror. Right. It's got I'll switch. Um, I just recently put in these awesome DiMarzio pickups. They're the Steve Vai uh, DiMarzio pickups that kind of match the guitar, actually, because they're blue and silver. And um, that guitar, I just absolutely love it. It's my favorite guitar. Yeah, they're both like really cool looking guitars and they sound good too. I mean, your pickup choices on there are obviously good. I'm not familiar with the DiMarzios. I'm like, I've always used like Seymour Duncan stuff, but your tone, and I've mentioned it on the show before, you have a very sexy tone on guitar. And it was like when we played uh, a few weeks back, I had mentioned to Chris that I thought you had the best tone of everyone mm -hmm. um, oh, that day. Awesome. But it is, you know, as I, we, I was telling a Dana Strum story before, because as, as, <laughs> Uh, you have as well played shows with Slaughter and Vince Neil and stuff. So, you, you know, Dane is a, a, a wonderful guy. And he had given me a cool compliment that, you know, my tone is in my hands uh, as far as that the amp matters a little bit, but it's kind of there. And you have that, you have that too, Brit. I, oh, you know, thanks. I, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, as far as tone, I do feel like less is more. Like I don't really use too many pedals. You know, mm -hmm, me neither. Like, like I have a boost and a delay for some solos and a wah, and that's it. <laughs> and then yeah. other than that, let's just go straight into the head. You know, I have um probably a, a little pedal board I made, and it's got about four four Boss pedals on it. Oh, what are you doing? Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> I got my kid. Oh. This cat. Sure, the cat. Oh, um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so it's a which is my boss tuner. Uh, I have a, a a delay, a chorus, and a, a EQ pedal I use as a boost. Nice, and yep. that's it. Yeah, and I but usually we'll have the you know nine hundreds or whatever going for me, and I, I get a pretty ballpark tone out of that that works for me, and that's all I need. I'm not ready to 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 make the the leap into using. Um, I even I did buy this thing, the Tone X. Uh -huh. have you heard of this thing? Yeah, I do have it, and I'm 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 playing with it for recording it at home. I'm sorry, my cat's taking over the show here. <laughs> um, oh, you can't see. Oh, okay. But I also got to say, I like your background a whole lot. We did that for you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, I, I did. A, <laughs> I did a whole. I was singing earlier. <laughs> uh, I, if you when you watch the show later, uh, watch it from the beginning, and I I do a whole uh, Brit Lightning song <laughs> that I switch the the lyrics for the uh, for Greece yes. for you. So, um, yeah, 
Anyways, I, I told him I'm high as shit. I was eating these gummies. They just kicked in. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Chris, take over. I, I do. Well, I, I, I just want to, I got to ask, you know, speaking of uh, about the guitars and about tone and stuff, the thing that's interesting about you, Britt, is that you, you're not only, you're known right, right now as rock metal, but you're not. If, if anybody's followed your career at all, realizes that you've done stuff way outside of that the jason derulo stuff the rachel platten stuff etc how how do you adapt i mean it seems to me you're you're a rock chick but it seems to me that would be really kind of hard to adapt to and, and do well i mean anybody could probably do not anybody but anybody that can play can play pretty much anything anybody like awesome that. can do it but to do it well is the different story. How how do you adapt your your ideas to playing in those different styles? Well, it helps to just to listen to different things. And I listen to all different music. So I don't I, I rarely sit at home and listen to metal and, and you know and stuff like that. I listen to a lot of jazz and all sorts of things. So um, but when I do get a gig like <clears throat> probably the hardest one to adapt to was Alejandro Sanz, which is like um, you know, he's a huge Spanish artist. Right. Uh, he's rock, but he's but it's pop, but it's very Latin influenced and stuff. Um, got a flamenco feel. So um, listening, making myself listen to those artists and, and getting that, it's a whole different, you know, rhythmic thing sort of. So um, just getting in the vibe of that helps a lot to just, just listening, you know, it, listening subconsciously too, like just having it on in the background constantly. Um, and then it kind of just like sinks in and, and you don't even know it, but you're, you're hearing licks and, and they kind of get into you, I think, um, right. in that way. But I have to say out of all the music that I played and stuff, I definitely love rock and roll. I mean, sometimes you get on these pop gigs and, and you're doing like one of those morning shows or something and, the, and they're like, okay. Oh, and, and you're doing line check. I'll never forget. I did a line check once in like good morning America. And I, I threw in a little fill me and the drummer were just having fun goofing off because it's line check or, you know, and yeah. the manager was like, ah, 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 just like the record, no fills. Don't forget. And it's like, ah, uh. <laughs> cause you just want to have cool. fun play sometimes but was that um, the first but, time you ever did a live tv uh appearance like that on the good morning america yeah you actually you want to hear the scariest guitar story about that sure. i yes. um so i had gone to gives to the new york showroom um beforehand they were like oh we want to give you one of these guitars to, to play on the show sure cool it was a beautiful denim les paul um but it was that at that time when those i think they were called the e-tuners or g tuners i think e-tuners mm -hmm. where they're the robotic tuners had come right. out and it, like all the the rage and and i was like oh so how do i work it so i got a little lesson on it at this at the uh at the showroom and obviously i, I it i didn't really get how it operated because i have that guitar and i go to play the first chord and thank god it wasn't because those things are live so thank god it wasn't really the time it was just the line check and i play like a g chord and it goes and it starts the robot <laughs> tuners start going and going and it plays this awful out of tune thing i think it tuned to some open tuning thing and yeah. i was like oh my god and i couldn't stop it from tuning and i couldn't figure out how to get it back <laughs> And thank God I had my guitar as a backup and I was like, screw this. <laughs> I like threw it. I was so like, <laughs> um, it is, yeah, my friend weird. had one. And, and so I have seen it before. And I, if I recall, like you, you, there's a button that you push to, to kind of like make it go into tuning mode and you have to hit it to the right, whatever the specific tuning. Cause it did like at least five tunings or something like that. Yeah. And I think, I think you could just strum all of them at one time or just, or did you have to like pick one at a time? Yeah, and I must have activated the button and then I strummed all of them because I was playing a chord and then it was like, yeah. <laughs> that was a bad, that was, that, that, those guitars were not good. Yeah, I don't know. If you can't tune your guitar, I mean, maybe you should yeah. be. <laughs> I don't know. They stopped <laughs> making those. They definitely stopped making those after a while. <laughs> That's scary, man. I'm glad yeah. you had your backup. Yeah. I'm like that too. I can't risk just having one guitar at these things. So like you, I'm dragging two guitars through the airports and it's, it's rough, man. It really is. Yeah. Well, we got the Floyd Rose thing going on. You can't break a string. <laughs> it's like, right. <laughs> nice. We were hanging out after the, after the last uh, show we did together and we were kind of comparing our setups on guitar and I was showing her how I had learn from Johnny to, to block it off. Cause I didn't always use those two. I was always like uh, Les Paul's and um, 
Michael Charvel had built me a really cool Telecaster that was a custom one I played for a really long time, but they didn't have uh, tremolos on them or anything, Ramy bars on them. So um, during the during the um, the the shutdowns, I was bored, and I go, you know, I've and I had some money, and I go, I want to invest and start buying the the old Charvels again because they started making some good Charvels out of Mexico that weren't that expensive. They're like nine hundred bucks or something, and so I I got like four of those, and I've been using them for a couple years now, and I think I got it figured out. But there's still a pain in the ass getting them ready for these gigs, and it's not just sweating or not sweating. I mean, the the climate of these places we go really affects what happens to the strings too. When I got to Puerto Rico and I had done my diligence and was in the hotel room doing my string stretch, which for people that think it's all partying and fun and games out at these shows, if you play one of these guitars, you're in your hotel room for like two hours, like before <laughs> sound check, even prepping to go to sound check. Um, so I'm thinking the guitars are good and everything's solid and tight. I'm like, all right, let's go to sound check. Get down there, pull these guitars out of the bag. They immediately start sweating and just like getting soaking wet. And the tuning just went, Wurr! the whole neck just, you know, uh, went in and and i had to like i you know from what i thought i was i had to like reset them up but it was more that they had to, to acclimate they had to sit there and acclimate um but it was like a hundred something degrees out there i'm sweating um i had to just kind of do a quick thing just to get through the sound check and then while while quiet riot was uh sound checking i was over there trying to reset up the guitars for this place and i finally got them uh good and how to leave them out there. We had to throw a towel over these things to keep them from <laughs> Jeez. sweating all over the place. So there's a lot of stress, like you said, that goes into it, but it is cool if you, you get up there because you have a lot of, I, I personally, I'm sure you do too, have a lot of anxiety, you know, going up and then you grab your guitar and you check the tuning and it's good. You're like, fuck yeah, let's do this show. You know? <laughs> and for you on top of it, you're, you're one guitar player. Just, just for people to understand that's, that's even more pressure uh because what do they could just be bass and drums if you're not going at least like when there's a second guitarist they could probably get through it without the crowd figuring it out too much you could just okay. one person could leave the stage and fix their problem but uh it's all on your shoulders up there and it's a it's a it's a big job and you do it well kid you do it well <laughs> thank you <laughs> Well, let's talk about Vixen since, uh, since uh, you know, that is that is the band that we, we should promote, I guess. Uh, talk about what's going on with it. It seems like you guys are extremely busy. It seems like every other every other week I see, here's a, here's a Vixen in St. Charles. Here you are in Idaho. Here you are. Here. This is her full-time job. I could tell you well, that. I, from I, I definitely get that. But, but it seems like Vixen itself, the entity of Vixen, might be busy as busy or busier than you guys have been since the original incarnation of the band no yeah this is definitely our busiest year crazy summer we were out yeah the whole summer really um we're finally starting to to wind down here as as fall and the holidays come about but um yeah i i gotta say sullivan's doing a good job for us he's keeping us working <laughs> i love him and uh <laughs> and and we're getting on you know great bills with guys like you eric and stuff i mean we're Aww. it's so much fun i love playing with with you and stephen piercy and um you know we've been doing a lot with quiet riot and slaughter that's right and and it's gonna keep happening this is this is the the 80s rock invasion, rock invasion yeah well, invasion. And what i gotta say about what i'm loving personally about all the shows that i haven't seen before so much as this year is all the young kids in the front row like just at rock timber the other day i mean the whole front row was they must have been 17 18 years old um and decked out they look like they came right out of 1983 and they're just like rocking out and i love seeing the young kids getting into it but i guess you know we're kind of like everything's cyclical and stuff and now mm -hmm. the 80s rock is kind of getting into be like the classic rock which is like getting cool again and um yep. so it's it's awesome i'm loving seeing the energy of the young kids out there in the crowds um and then other than that, we've got a new single finally coming out with a new music video, October 2nd. Cool. Um, and we'll be following that up with some more new music. So we're very excited about that. Um, I think it sounds, I think Vixen fans will like it. I think it's um, it's still Vixen with like, you know, the harmonies and the big chorus and stuff, but it's uh, it's also modern sounding too. So I think it's a good, cool. good mix. The, the hardest thing is always, at least in my opinion, for a band like Vixen, to continue with a different singer and and obviously lorraine's great 
but Janet is still actively out there as well, which right. makes it very tough. And automatically, before people hear a note of what you guys are doing, they start with, well, why isn't she in the band? You right. know, they, they start there. For, for, for you, is that a difficulty? And what kind of pushback do you guys get? Not really from fans only, but even like promoters and industry people and, you know, to, to get what you're doing to be accepted versus people always leaning back toward 1988 or whatever. Well, you know, it was Janet's choice to, to leave and start a, a new project with her husband and stuff like that. So it was amicable. So it was all good. Sure. There was no bad blood. So that's, that's the good news. And then when Lorraine stepped in, you know, she is, she's totally different than Janet. Uh, their voices don't sound that similar. She hits all the notes, of course, and everything, but mm -hmm. she's got a different tonality um, and she's got a completely different stage energy. Um, I, I liken her to like David Lee Roth. She's our David Lee Roth. She runs around like crazy. I mean, during that Vakken festival, she jumped in the crowd. She's crowd surfing. I mean, she's <laughs> not, she's all over the place. So um, I feel like, I feel like it's almost like a different show almost you know, it feels like a different band and it is a different mm -hmm. band, you know, and, and we've got Julia on bass now. So, um, but I, I think no matter what the fans can say, whatever they want about lineup history, blah, blah, blah. But it's a great show. When they come to the show, they always leave saying, well, I wasn't sure what I was going to get, but that was awesome. I had a great time. I would see you guys again, you know? So I think that's the most important thing to just deliver a kick-ass rock show. Sure. You, oh. you girls ha have the, the quiz essential, uh, late eighties sound, you like it, it really you do capture it well and the image is really cohesive right now in the band where like it, it's it's there's a kind of magic there and, and you know i watched the the show a few weeks back and i watched the crowd's reaction and they were excited at what they're seeing and and uh lorraine does have a ton of energy uh, i was really talking you guys up i was like man she's just going on 10 the whole time I like her moon boots, you know, she wears up their white boots. Those are cool. Um, I don't know. You girls just look badass. Um, you, you had brought a keyboardist in. Yes. Now, is, is the keyboardist always with you or is it just for that gig? Yeah. So, you know what? Vixen has always had a keyboard player. Most of the time in their heyday, they were the keyboard player was hidden. But they always had a male keyboard player to kind of just also help out on the road. So that's why mm -hmm. <laughs> we make him do the dirty work. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> the, pe the pianist, the penis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to have one of those. <laughs> At least one penis, penis. <laughs> but no, it's, you know, it's always good to just also have a guy out with you on the road. He carries things. We may, we, you know, we give him a lot of shit. But he's great. <laughs> yeah, carry, can, carry this for me, bro. My arm. It's I got a. Yeah, I'm just weak. <laughs> and uh, you know, <laughs> we make him handle the birds. Yeah, I'm just a girl. Can you open the door? Can you clear my pedals? I don't know how to plug right. these in. Can you do it? <laughs> uh, great. Well, he sounded great at this thing. It was like, um, like I was saying, it just had that. Oh, the sound good. You guys have these like cool, you know, hits that, you know, Richard Marks helped write and stuff. It just sounds awesome. And, you know, your guitar tone, uh, these everybody gets a show and uh, with Vixen and there's certainly no disappointments. Uh, you really raise the bar for, for the rest of us that got to go on uh, <laughs> after you. But for anybody who gets a chance to see our shows together, you're going to be stoked on this uh, lineup of Vixen. And you're going to see uh, Quiet Riot, Slaughter, uh, Great White. This 80s invasion is growing. And I, I, you know, Jason mentioned something to me that they're like working on something for next year that it gave me goosebumps. I'm not going to go too much into it, uh, but I think it has all of us involved. And it's, I, I don't know, man, if it happens, it's going to be the most awesome thing ever. So stay Hell tuned yeah. for that. Right. <laughs> well, Brett, let me ask you this, uh, you know, for you stepping in, and I, I don't even like to say stepping in because you've been there a while now. You've been there, what, 10 years? Almost 10 years, right? I joined in 2017. So I'm you know, coming you. up on it. Our <laughs> math isn't very good. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're <laughs> two <laughs> monkeys with a Not good with the maths. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how much time did you spend learning? Cause, and, and I'm... I'll just tell you, I've watched, I, I haven't seen you guys live, but I've watched, like I watched the Vakken show and I've watched tons of videos. It doesn't seem like you're, like you took it upon yourself to mimic Jan's work. 
it seems like you you throw the elements in there when they're needed you know certain solos you certainly have you know learned you know note perfect but it seems like you're doing your own thing that just kind of fits how how much did time did you spend learning jan stuff versus making the songs your own as you've gone forward well <clears throat> From my experience, I mean, I, I'm never going to be Jan. I'm never going to sound exactly like her. Sure. And uh, I'm never going to sound exactly like anybody. I'm only going to sound like me because it is what it is. Right. Um, so, you know, I definitely took the time to, to to listen and watch videos and see her energy and her vibe and listen to the way she plays and how she plays the chords and like with what kind of energy, you know, people have different energy, even if it's the same notes, you know. Um, so I did, I did try to study that a bit. Um, and then at the end of the day, just jamming with the band, also just being me and just being like, well, this is, you know, this is how I do it. Like, I know the notes, I know what I'm supposed to sound like, but this is like with my flavor. And so sometimes in the solos, like I know the key licks and the key elements, but I'll noodle around those and add or subtract my own things with it. So, right on. Um, and that just makes it, I think, better because then you're comfortable and you're just, you know, but then I have to say, Eric, you nailed everything note for note for note. I mean, I, I'm always. So, oh, that's like, sweet of you to say. Line. Yeah. It's it's tough to come in uh, with any kind of you're, you're going to a band that had a virtuoso guitar player. And I certainly wasn't one of those. And I, I was a 90s guy. but We didn't do too much of that. You know what I mean? So I kind of had to learn on my feet in um, Stephen's band. And I used to have to change things to make it more comfortable for me in mm -hmm. the beginning and honestly like i've been in the band over 20 years it took like probably 10 years before i could even kind of get close to nailing what he did and um we added rat songs as the years went on and right now we're doing a lot of rat songs some of the stuff's really gnarly and johnny's been taking over some of the leads we we added some songs uh morning after and nobody rides for free and stuff like that so he's actually gonna take it over there but thank you for uh you know noticing uh <laughs> my efforts uh yeah it's it's fun doing doing guitar solos it used to scare the shit out of me but now that um i've been doing it long enough i i, I love it you know i wouldn't change it do you put your own spin on it too i'm curious like do you feel that you do Cause sometimes oh cause totally sometimes i feel like i do but maybe the audience doesn't know because you know right. it sounds like it but sure i i i do uh put throw in little licks here and there like you do you know what i mean just to put my little spin on it you know yeah. if it's a if it's a, a key solo that had um you know a memorable you know melodic thing i'll i'll, I'll do it at the best i can to that ability but some leads that that were that warren did that were kind of um a mishmash of stuff i might change it up a little bit and nobody complains about it yeah <laughs> uh, and i and i'm I, in the moment too i you know we got our whammy bars i like to accentuate stuff and you know go, go do a little eddie van halen on on uh some of this I, I love to do the picks i don't think warren ever did pick slides but i do pick slides all over the place i love that <laughs> yeah. shit um and you you girls do do some cool stuff too you do little montages of some pretty badass rock songs of the of the day and uh Roxy, I was giving compliments too, because she is just a bombastic drummer to play with, which makes it a lot easier. Am I right? Oh, yeah. I think a band is only as good as the drummer. You know, it's like if you don't have a solid drummer, you have no solid foundation to, to be great off of. So, uh, yeah, she's killer. She hits hard. She makes it she makes it easy to play and uh, I'm sure more comfortable to play with because, uh, you know, a lot of times I've, I've played with a ton of drummers in my years and uh it's nerve wracking when a drummer's like speeding up and slowing down and you know, it just, it, it, it makes the vibe weird and you can't really focus on the, the show part, which yeah. is really important. And it, it's, it's very important in Vixen. I mean, that's where the, the fans start to figure out that I'm probably not a good dancer and things like that. When we start to do like <laughs> <laughs> choreography, uh, like apparent, <laughs> apparently rat, uh, used to do this whole uh choreography during back for more uh -huh. okay where they were like there's a there's like a refrain in the song where it's it's like they like they, they like move their guitars a certain way and they chop it back and we were all like 
backstage at one point steven's like yeah we got to do this choreography that rat does during this and we were trying to get it and oh god we were all doing like four different things up there and uh <laughs> there, we did try to do it for like two shows and it just was a disaster both times there's always someone that wasn't doing the uh, guck, 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 thing. Yeah. <laughs> just look goofy as fuck so that i think it was i think it might have been the gig we were playing with you guys uh steven like he'll turn his back to the crowd and like come up to me and it was that part came and he came up he goes don't you even fucking think about doing that dance move <laughs> i go okay and so like now i just kind of just stand there and some of some people do it i don't do it uh, but you girls where i'm going with this is uh there's there's a couple choreography parts where you guys like go for it like 80s style and it looks badass and you got it together did it take a lot of practice to get that or are you girls naturally good with dance stuff you know we naturally we make a lot of eye contact we're always kind of communicating on stage so we're always looking at each other and feeding off of each other so when there's like an opportunity some of it's choreographed but then some things that look choreographed we just are just random too it was the yeah. scooch pooch specifically oh yeah, that one yeah that one so pooch. you know what actually richard marx did that once and that's okay. where it came from and I, I and roxy saw it and she was like oh my god when he was covering that song and uh and what and and she was like that's the coolest thing we have to incorporate that we yeah we call it the bunny hop buddy okay i call it the scooch pooch okay. but uh <laughs> <laughs> the bunny hop that's i like that too um that but it looked cool that's, it wasn't that took, dumb. that took a little practice because also we were right. doing like a little riff and yeah and then there's one other part where we do where we come together in the beginning of how much love and i don't know i'm playing the riff and for some reason i can never we kind of go up and down it's like dun, 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 dun. Na, 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 na. And and I'm always up on the down, and they're down on that, and we're always. And so it's Julie and Lorraine, and then me. So now I told Lorraine, I go when I come over to you, just put your hand on my shoulder and just push me down when we go down. So then I'll get the right. Well, I know the one. That's the one. Yeah, and if she does, if she's not there to do that, I'm I'm always on the up the I'm on the up beat. It's so funny. But you keep smiling. I mean, that's that's a sign of professionalism. Like you have that about you, where whatever happens, you 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 know, you're beautiful. You could smile. It just you know, it just works. It smooths itself out, and it's <laughs> it's great to watch. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a big lesson. Smile. Oh uh, yeah, right. right. Just keep smiling. Don't let <laughs> them see that there's a problem. No, yeah, they don't know. They don't. But if you make that face, like. Yeah, I used to be lame like that. I used to have little shit fits. You know, I had to yeah. be the angry punk rock guy. guy to, <laughs> what, uh, it's stupid. You just got to relax and you don't want to need to have a heart attack up there at my age. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me ask you this one, Britt, real quick. Um, you, you as well as I and everybody knows that there's always the argument of good guitarist good for a woman guitarist etc that's always been out there it's probably never going to go away that being said it seems like it might be diminishing a little bit and i'll put a lot of that on nita strauss specifically because she's having a lot of a lot of success doing things her own way to where people are just saying she can fucking play you know nobody's nobody's really saying well for a chick she can you know it, it's not that and and she's one of the first that's really had that how important is her rise you know bet like across the board does it open the doors more or is it not important at all that i'm looking too far into it or or what do you think yeah no her she's been amazing and i mean it's great for a, a big artist like alice cooper to, to take on a female like that just in the same way that michael jackson took on a female guitar players sure. mm -hmm. so Talk i think it's that. a huge statement and i think it it means a lot coming from from those male stars you know that they're hey like we're accepting these women as badass members of our band um and yeah nita has done an amazing job doing that and she really has just capitalized on everything she's she's all out there like it's it's totally amazing um mm -hmm. so i think that's definitely helped and i mean it's inspired a lot of girls to pick up guitars and play and i think also with social media now you know you can just see a lot more people playing in their bedrooms and even if it's just not on a stage you know but you see a lot more girls and during COVID, i know that the numbers from like guitar center and sweetwater and all those sales it was more women buying guitars more girls than than men so um that that says a lot you know that it, it doesn't, does. doesn't matter to totally and why would it matter like uh you know it, it doesn't require any like 
specific like strength or body build type that like right. a woman doesn't have that a man has. so why wouldn't a girl be able to play guitar i right. mean i can see that more in drums like oh maybe she can't hit as hard but no look at roxy you know like we just talked about so it has not it has nothing to do with that and i think mm -hmm. if you go back like way back in history like muses and stuff were um like in the roman god times and stuff like it was like women that were playing the like lyre or whatever the whatever mm -hmm old Greek, you know, instruments were and stuff. So like, you know, women always did play music or like guys were out and women were playing piano and learning things like you went way, you went way further back than I thought you were gonna go. I thought you were gonna go like <laughs> Ann <Anne> Wilson. <laughs> You're like, no, like uh, Greek mythology. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but um, no, I think it's it's getting to a good point um, again, where it's 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 more commonplace. That, there's right. there's an aesthetic that that really works, like as you mentioned, Michael Jackson. I think he he might have been uh, one of the first when he uh, Prince started. He, Prince, 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 yeah, Prince. Did that's too. right. Thanks. Thank you for uh, letting us reminding us of that, uh, Prince. But it definitely looks good, and then and then it's got that uh, that the the male female energy too that you get both you know what i mean and it, it can be sexy and cool and yeah like alice cooper figured it out and he's kind of kept it going uh orianthe is another you know She's amazing, amazing yeah. young amazing. young uh, guitarist yeah these girls are triple threats man they look good they play good they they dance they've got dance moves <laughs> but but that's that is in my opinion what separates a lot of these bedroom youtubers you know what i mean you know they they could sit there and, and record themselves a million times i noticed 99 percent of the time they're just kind of uh lip syncing their guitar along with the with the track where mm -hmm. brit's got to go out there do this for real and look yeah. good doing it and entertain you and make you feel like you got your money's worth it's like to me that's a whole new, another level than these youtube people i don't let them well, you know discourage me yeah, I know, I know. I'm not a fan of the whole YouTube sensation either, but like it's, yeah, it kind of drives me nuts. And, and then everybody thinks they're just complete rock stars and they're, you know, right. and, but, but it's kind of, it's a different, it's a different thing. Yeah. Well, right. and, can you carry your shit through the airport? I didn't think so. The weird mm -hmm. thing too is that though now in today's world, these young bands, I'm seeing personally a lot of bands that are coming together that way. Where they just find a find a drummer that you know, it is good I, for that. I, well, I'll point to the girls in Plush who I know. You know their their current drummer they saw on Instagram. They just saw her on Instagram, hit her up, and now she's in the band. And like that whole band was manufactured through social media. It, it is. I, I'm with you guys. You know, I I like it better when people get together and they figure out if they have a vibe instead of instead of this digital vibe of here here's my mp3s what can you do with it you know but mm -hmm. but i guess we're, that's because we're it, old <laughs> it makes it could make you potentially more expendable too they're like yeah it's easy to find somebody yeah. else who could play that cover song on guitar we found him this way and if you don't watch your ass we'll turn that youtube back on and replace you that's you're all replaceable right yeah. <laughs> fuck heard that before <laughs> nice. well Britt, where are you going to be with vixen here in the in the coming months and and what can we look forward to past the next single okay well this wednesday you can see me and eric live at the utah state fair in salt lake city that's going to be a great show i'm very excited for that i love playing state fairs by the way because it's like you can go play a rock show and then eat a fried twinkie it's like <laughs> and you know the check's going to go through yeah uh, Right. Most yeah, important. fried Twinkie. I stay away from the fried Twinkies. But, uh, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, one thing about the state fairs, I actually, I've never been, you know, nobody's ever really like been like, Brit, you can't do this or you can't do that in the band. But last, I think it was last year, on these state fairs, I like to go on all these janky carnival rides, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so when we, we did sound check and I was like, everybody went back to the hotel to get changed. And I was like, I'm cool. I brought all my gig clothes. Everything's in the RV. I'm good to go. Like, I'm going to stay at the fair and wander and have fun. Nice. So I go on one of those zippers, right? In the, in the oh, cave. the zipper. Oh yeah. And the zipper, I get stuck at the top of the zipper. And, <laughs> and, zipper uh, got stuck. Zipper got stuck. And I'm mm -hmm. sitting up there like hanging half upside down and I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. It seems like it's taking forever. And, um, and I, I hear like, like the MCs on the stage and talking and I'm like, Oh my God, I got to get to the stage. Like the show's about to start. And I'm, I'm yelling down. I'm like, I have to get on the stage. You got to fix this. You got to make it go. You got to let me out of here. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my God, they got it going. You were able to get out of this thing? Finally. But I mean, I mean, like ready to roll intro music, and I'm running to the stage. And then Roxy was like, Brett. I think we got to make a rule: no carnival rides till after the show. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yes. Oh my God, that's insane. So, anyways, that's one thing that I have to keep in mind now when I do these fairs. Keep it, keep it under control. You're brave. I don't do, I don't do anything out at these things. I'm so boring. I'm just like in my hotel room, go straight to the sound check, back to the hotel room, to the gig. I, I'm like, I worry about those things. I overthink. I that's what I think exactly would happen to me if I would go on a ride. Yeah. Like I always think the worst. <laughs> Yeah. So you're, you are brave. Uh, we're excited to, to go out. I hope this um, 80s rock invasion picks up steam because what a great lineup and all the bands have super solid band members right now. These people really can relive the 80s and get the, get a rock show that's on par with what they got in 1987. Yeah, so. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> well, Britt, thank you so much. I, I look forward to, to seeing you uh, this week and come by anytime. You're welcome on the show to promote whatever you want. Absolutely. I love it. Well, thank you so much for having me. Great chatting with you guys. Great way to start the day. And, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you all soon. All right. All right. Well, let's wrap this up with uh, the most famous Vixen song. It's a little live version with you guys all playing um, Edge of a Broken Heart. So, and that's going to wrap it for Chris Hagen Presents as well. So Eric and I will be back next week. Um, Britt will be on a stage somewhere next week, I would imagine. So let's check it out right now. This is Vixen with Edge of a Broken Heart, and we will see you guys next week. See ya.